Councillor Clark, please. Madam Chair, uh, Councillor Collins, whose work uh, is affected, uh, one of you to note that he had an appointment to be back within 30 minutes, but he regrets not being here and is supportive and on his behalf. At the appropriate time, I'd like to move the recommendation. All right, thank you, Councillor Clark. I will come back to you. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Council members. Uh, it's a great honor to be here before you uh, about a year after we first came forward. Uh, my name is Victor Jettick, and I'm the president of the Nicola Tesla Educational Corporation, or NTEC for short. If I get this working right, then we'll be in. Uh, our agenda for today is uh, give you an understanding of what this is all about, uh, how the city will benefit from this, how Nikola Tesla uh, contributed to this city, and what is the significance of, of all of this for the future. Uh, the NTEC proposal is very specifically linked to historical and current day events that make this road the most significant road in all of Hamilton for Nikola Tesla. Keep in mind, we will be absorbing 100% of the cost for this. This is the road, as you can see, that we're proposing. This is a vision of the future, what it would look like. The benefit to Hamilton, if you take a look at it, the first industrial revolution of the early 20th century occurred with the aid of Tesla's early inventions that provided Hamilton with the chief power, cheapest power in Canada. We believe that the next industrial evolution will be driven by high technology with the aid of Tesla's latter inventions ideas and visions. The premise is that we would like to associate Hamilton with Tesla and his ideas so that the city can benefit from being associated with the new technology, innovation, and his vision for the future. <coughs> the world will take notice in Hamilton respecting Tesla and will enhance the sentiment towards Hamilton. Uh, the petition, we launched a petition uh, less than a month ago. We actually have now 2,200, and I will present the petition here uh, to Madam Clerk. One thing I will point out, as anticipated by us, there is a significant number of Serbians who have signed on this. The reason being is the Serbians are fully versed in Tesla, and as a result, they quickly come uh, forward. Uh, However, what we did find out very quickly in discussing with others, as soon as we started explaining Tesla and the significance to Hamilton, they quickly come on board and they support the petition. This also goes one step further. It points out that there is a challenge for us to help to educate this city, the residents, and what we can benefit from Tesla. In brief, Tesla arrived in North America in 1884 and by 19, 1898, Hamilton was already benefiting from his inventions. Tesla's impact on the world is immense, and his inventions power the world. And I mean, literally, the whole world is powered by Tesla's AC current. In 1888, Tesla developed the polyphase AC system. A decade later, we were already reaping the benefit in this city and we came to be known as the electric city as a result of that. This is the Hamilton Spectator of 1898, August 26th. And as it says, the power is turned on, and yesterday was an important day. The Canadian Electrical News, as it says here, of November, it talks about November 12th will go down in electrical annals, a red letter day, as it was the formal opening of the Sioux Power Generating Station that sent power to Hamilton, thanks to the five Johns who had the wisdom at that time. Even now, the city is finally acknowledging this. This is a plaque that was just put up in December of 2014. Ontario Power Generation acknowledges that this age that they talked about was sparked by Tesla. Tesla, over the past decade, has been gaining significant recognition for his contribution to society all over the world, 
and has inspired the most planned electric vehicle in the world. The power behind the Tesla vehicles is the Nikola Tesla induction motor invented over a century ago. <coughs> we have moved into a high-tech age. Tesla's technology continues to expand and is at the foundation of many of the current technologies. To have this is Hamilton's opportunity to latch on to this and to become a leader once again. Nikola Tesla's legacy has helped raise funds in support of statues and museums in his name. It has even drawn the attention of Elon Musk, and if any of you don't know who he is, he's the man behind Tesla Motors. He has donated a million dollars last year to the museum. Entech has had an active year. We have been growing our membership. We have, been we have transformed from a non-for-profit corporation to a registered charity. We have awarded our first Nikola Tesla Innovation Award to Michael Wolf, and you will hear from this young man shortly. We have been working with the staff here to, to deal with this proposal that we bring forward to you. We would like to draw your attention to just a few comments that we received in the petition. I believe this is a good, this is a good promotion for the, the redevelopment of Hamilton, said Jim Casey, who is the Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair co-chair. Rebranding is a great idea, and Tesla should ignite an instant global ability to relate to it and to connect. This is an opportunity for Hamilton. The power of Tesla. Hamilton, considering that the proposal has already drawn attention, on the petition, we've got people signing from 11 countries on five continents. We have 27 US states represented. We have six provinces represented. I might add that the majority of the signatures are really from our local area, but there are notices, of course, around the world. Now just imagine the exposure your approval will provide. Imagine the power of the exposure when the signs in the QEW, seven of them, read Nikola Tesla, and people start wondering why. And then they start linking and researching, finding out what was Hamilton, what was the significance to it, and what this will do for us. To us, we are really looking to create a win, win, win. For the city, and I want to stress one important thing, this is at no cost. We're not asking you to pay for the street signs. We're not asking the province to pay for the street signs. We're prepared to pay it all. We will fundraise and we will make sure it is done. Hamilton will benefit from the innovative thinking, leading, and more importantly, it will give us possibly the ability more R&D money coming our way. Our higher, ed, highly educated staff, uh, students that be, will work their way through the system, will mean attracting more businesses because they businesses look for a highly educated workforce. Hamilton will become associated with the modern technology. In closing, Entech, as I said already, will pay the cost of the signs. The, the city will fix a, an issue that has been brought to their attention from emergency services, that sometimes they don't know which road to go, up or down, but that cost to fix it. Well, that's part of the signage. That will fix it and people will know exactly when the call comes in. The vote of confidence to associate Hamilton with the call of Tesla will pay off over time. Youth will grow and develop into productive citizens with improved employment prospects in Hamilton. Hamilton will be open to innovation. We are appealing to you for that critical element that we want to change, help change the position of Hamilton and reposition it in the right light for the future. That's what I have to say. I want to thank you. Unfortunately, I will add just a couple of comments. Uh, the student that you saw here, they were all introduced to Nikola Tesla in their grade nine science class. Unfortunately, they had to leave. 
and their teacher was planning to speak, and unfortunately, uh, he too has left. He was going to really give you a significant historical perspective. Oh, sorry, Colin is still here, but he will do that. All right. Uh, so I'll defer to uh, Madam Chair how you want to proceed next. Thank if you have some questions or if you want to. Yes, thank you. I'll take. I'll take over. Thank you. So I have Councillor Farr and Councillor Green. Councillor Farr, please. Victor, thanks for coming. And, uh, also, thank you for coming in the last term of council. Apparently, uh, uh, what's before us is uh, obviously uh, progress on your part and uh, those of the uh, NTEC there at 755 Cape Street East in Hamilton. Um, and uh, looking forward to hearing some of the other delegates, particularly the uh, history teacher. I enjoyed that, uh, and I'm sure you did recent uh, Murdoch Mysteries episode that featured uh, Nikola Tesla, and also the 1980s uh, orchestral maneuvers in the dark pit called Tesla Girls. Uh, so that's how I was educated, uh, and certainly uh, we'll get more of that here today. I only have one question, and it's kind of on the education piece. When you first came uh, last term, you talked about uh, uh, Tesla Science Fairs for Youth, and working with Innovation Park, and uh, naming a local school, and creating the scholarships, which it appears you've done. Um, where are you on the on the uh, science fairs and the, uh, the work with Innovation Park, given that that's a big part piece? Okay. I'm sure, thank you. Uh, we, our major battle for the last year has been to become a, a registered charity. That is a very important uh, milestone for us. So we dedicated a lot of that. At the same time, we did not lose sight of the whole concept of educating children. So we have been in touch with McMaster Innovation Park. I've talked with the president already. We have visited McMaster University. We thought to the uh, dean of engineering responsible for, for electronics. We've linked in very quickly with uh, the VA Area Science and Engineering Fair, which is a fair put here, uh, put together here at Mohawk College and encompasses the geographic area from Niagara Falls all the way through the Halton region. At that fair, we very quickly made sure that all of the students there were fully informed with Tesla. We, in, in less than 20 days, created a new pamphlet and made sure that every child received a pamphlet educating them there. We are now continuing on that mission. Or, or, or we have already improved a five-fold increase to our commitment to BASEF, base okay, because they are really dealing with those, that right age category, grade seven to grade 12. So that is very important to us. Uh, we will continue with all of the others, it just takes time. Uh, we definitely have a clear vision to want a new high school to be named Nikola Tesla in light of what it will do, it will inspire children. We will definitely look to partner with all of these organizations. So we're making linkages wherever we possibly can and just takes time to develop it all. Councillor? Just as a devil's advocate, you, you see a little bit of correspondence uh, that isn't necessarily supportive. It's not uh, overly offensive to you, but uh, one I believe made the comparison that uh, you know we're contemplating in this city, don't necessarily agree with it, I'm just offering a devil's advocate uh, we should think about local uh, uh, historic and local uh, folks who made an impact as opposed to a sort of internationally recognized uh, uh, great scientist. What would your response to that be uh, uh, with respect to that one issue that I've, I've come across here? Back through the chair, please. Yes, uh, to the chair to respond to that. We have to look at individuals that will inspire. Nikola Tesla is an instant person that inspires the youth. As soon as you teach them about what he did and what, what his stuff is, what his whole body of knowledge, they get inspired. Now, to say that we, we, ignore, we do not recommend ignoring locals, we are recommending that as we move forward, if you remember in my September 4th presentation, talking about also erecting a statue of Nikola Tesla, but being flanked with the historical significance of the five Johns. We want to bring all of that out because it's not Nikola Tesla by himself. Nikola Tesla didn't do this in Hamilton. It was his technology that the five Johns knew and brought to the city. And this city, unfortunately, has forgotten all of that. 
There is very, almost nothing. I was su really surprised when I just saw the plaque in December 2014. And my extensive research also brought me to indication. I haven't seen this particular plaque, but there's a, supposed to be a plaque inside terminal towers that was put there either 1964 or 66. That's all that we have acknowledging our significant leadership. We are teaching in schools the wrong stuff. I talked to the school board specifically about that. How do we link all of this in? And they come back to me and we can't change the curriculum as long as you can fit him in the curriculum. So in grade eight, it tells uh, the teachers to teach history between 1890 to 1914, and then bring out the social impact of the significance of that time. My son just finished grade eight. He was being taught about the Yukon Gold Rush. Why, how can my child relate to a Yukon Gold Rush when we can take him down on 366 Victoria and show him the building that was the first building that had power in this, in this city? Teach him what it meant for this city. Why are we here? As a Serbian, I'm not here to advocate for Serbs. Please do not take that down. Okay? The Tesla is not a question of, of being the whole concept of Serbia. The, what the point was this, that in the 1900s, our forefathers came to this city. That's why this city has the oldest Serbian community in Eastern Canada. It's because they came to work in those factories that were built because of the, the power that the five John brought to this city. One additional point I'd like to point out. Nelson Mandela, everybody knows who Nelson Mandela is. We've all heard. He has schools. There's two schools in the Toronto area named after Nelson Mandela. Was he ever in, in those areas? It's not the significance. What is, those, what is Nelson Mandela doing? It is inspiring those children. We want to do the same thing. All right, thank you. I appreciate that, Councillor Carr. All right, Councillor Green, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. And certainly, uh, I have been inspired by Nelson Mandela. Understanding what might have been had uh, J.P. Morgan and Thomas Edison not pulled the funding for him when he was trying to distribute free static power throughout, uh, throughout North America. Where we would be today, who only knows, maybe we'd have five cars. I don't know, like, the, the, the impact would have been huge. And I say that, Madam Chair, because I, I agree that future perspective of this city, the compelling vision that I have of this city, will be one that will include what is called the third industrial revolution, which is a post-carbon revolution that will rely on technologies such as has been identified here in our presentation. But I guess I am also challenged by what I feel to be a bit of a stretch in terms of its connection here to Hamilton. What I would hope for uh, if this were to go forward is that it would be the catalyst to come off that highway and go down to what has been a post-industrial area, you know, acknowledging the recent struggles that we're having here with US Steel, and that in its place would be uh, advanced light manufacturing, renewable energies, and a shift in our brand and in our, the, the economic direction of our city. I, I see that, I hope for that. I'm wondering about the timing of this particular project, though. I, I did, through you, Madam Chair, get to, to sit through uh, your original presentation uh, before I was a counselor, and uh, certainly having done my own homework on the Tesla Festival, am inspired by it. And just imagine if we were coming off the highway there and there was a, a coil or something that was delivering or distributing free uh, electricity to the neighborhoods there. So um, I do understand the criticism that perhaps locality and the timing of this might not be as relevant to residents locally here, given that there, there's probably other innovative technologies that were, that were created here and invented here. Uh, so, but that's on a past perspective. On a future perspective, Madam Chair, through you as the presenter, I just wanted to know that I fully also acknowledge and understand what it can mean uh, for the future direction of our, of our children and their education, as well as entrepreneurs, in terms of it being a gateway into maybe a new Hamilton into this third industrial revolution. So I certainly appreciate them bringing this forward. And um, and my question is of one on timing. I just want to take you back off the counselor far. What concrete steps will your organization do to put some of the cultural frameworks in place 
the science fairs, the, the entrepreneurial you know, ventures that go beyond just what I would say, and I say this respectfully, kind of the superficial acts of naming uh, streets and roadways. What, what are some other activities that, um, that you can commit to that would carry this thing forward beyond just the roadway? Vic, concrete uh, evidence of action going forward, please. Okay, yes. Uh, we are already, as I indicated, uh, five-fold increase to the base at fair. That's significant. We intend to increase it further as our funding capabilities increase. We will be, uh, we've already approved, our directors have approved a formal scholarship. Those are, the base apps are our awards. They're low-level awards. And non, as non-graduate type studies, we have approved already a $10,000 scholarship for McMaster that we will uh, work and to put in place to get out there. Uh, we've already been in touch with the Hamilton Public Library to hold public seminars for, for the public just to come out and hear all this. Your support and things happening at this level right now are gonna ignite the interest of this subject. And then we will then move forward. So from that perspective, we are laying the groundwork to do all of this. We are continuing to uh, prepare for these fundraising efforts. We are continuing, we are, my church, for example, in order to respect and honor our effort, put, it, uh, put on a annual church ball, on, on behalf of the church, not on behalf of us, using the name Nicola Tesla, all of a sudden that hall got packed People that normally never show up showed up because of this. So we will be putting on uh, events like that to uh, educate the people. As I said, we recognize there's a big education factor that we need to do. So, so two, two, um, two additional follow-up questions. On that roadway coming into the city, have you identified any businesses that might uh, relate to this specifically current examples that might be able to leverage this opportunity in the vicinity of this, of this roadway entrance of this, um, this parkway? Yeah. We, in, even in the petition, there's one person who says, I own a business in that area, and I'd be greatly honored to see this happen. There are other businesses in the community who have indicated that they are ready to come forward and support uh, this okay. initiative. Just for clarification, are there any businesses in the area whose business it is uh, in some way directed to electronics or renewables or anything like I'm just trying to get a sense of how we can connect it to that, to that physical area. Is there any yeah, and counselor, industry? And counselor, if they can answer it, we can always ask staff. Okay, so my last question then would be, uh, what relationships or conversations have you had? And if so, are there currently any programs that either of our, or any of our post-secondary education, uh, McMaster, Mohawk, or Beamer. Okay, if I may, sure, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, there have been a number of businesses. There is a business actually found in Hamilton. It's called AC Tesla. They're very heavy into uh, power transmissions. Uh, they are, they've already come on board. They're willing to back us up and work with, with this. There are uh, other organizations that are similar to us, not even just in Hamilton, that are willing to come and help us and help get this message out and to educate the children. As for McMaster, as I indicated, we've already gone through the Dean of Engineering through his department head of uh, electronical engineering, 100% uh, behind us and willing to work with us. Uh, at Mohawk College, uh, the Dean of uh, Engineering, Tony Toma, he's willing to work with us in Great movie uh, wants to see this happen. Uh, BASEF is, is thrilled that we were able to get to them as quickly as we did and that we are willing to expand our future roles in that direction. So there is already indication that we are going getting support from outside. Okay. And, and I guess I'll just close uh, to you now, Chair, to present you just, just so I'm clear and so that everybody knows kind of, kind of where I stand on this particular issue. I certainly uh, support the initiative. I think uh, it is an inspirational message to the youth. I think it is an international message. Uh, I do have concerns around perhaps this might be premature, given that some of the other things, the other uh, milestones haven't quite yet been reached or solidified yet. And I guess that's something I'll have to work out for myself. But certainly appreciate having had this opportunity here, Kevin.
I never thought I'd be talking about the foot traffic in the city council. So I thank you for that. You've probably been successful. Okay, thank you, Councillor Green. Thank you.